Hi guys. I am Dennis. I'm Selin. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of Syncast. Before we start, I want to remind you of something. Uh, we are currently live on Facebook and through the broadcast uh, you can ask your questions and um, state your opinions anytime. We will uh, ask our guests if you have questions. And we are uploading Syncast records to our YouTube and Spotify accounts. We already upload our first and second um, episodes so you can easily find them they are waiting for you now we can start uh welcome to our syncast again guys uh of course it's a new day new syncast and new two beautiful guests in here yes <laughs> and of course the new topic which is called cultural exchange and so we should introduce our guests first and maya you can go first Okay. Uh, thank you, Celine, and thank you, Dennis, for having mm -hmm. me today. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Maya. I'm 23 years old, and I'm from Zagreb, Croatia. So uh, my kind of backstory is uh, I was studying social work for a few years, and then I dropped out because I wanted to study psychology. And it's kind of like long, complicated story for, but like for that, I needed to go to Germany, but that didn't happen because of Corona. So now I'm just in Zagreb, chilling, enjoying my free time and currently looking for a job. So that is my current situation. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Mario? Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Mario. I'm also 23 years old and I also come from Zagreb. Uh, I have recently finished my studies and I work uh, as a computer engineer and as a software developer and in my free time I also enjoy cycling and I also do volunteering work for a few NGOs uh, with Syncro being uh, one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty much it for, for my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can ask our first question which is which projects you have been participated and what were the topics? So I've been, I was actually in just one project, um, thanks to Maria, but we're gonna come to that later. Uh, I was in project in Romania, it was called Be Confident, and the topic of the project was uh, social inclusion of children with disabilities, and it lasted for two weeks, something like that. So yeah, that was the only one, <laughs> but not the last one, hopefully. Of course, of course, and yours? Uh, yeah, so as, as far as projects go, I'm quite a veteran in the project, in the project sphere. Uh, I have been to more than 10 uh, projects in total. Uh, yeah, uh, some of them were youth changes. Some of them I, I, I did as a participant, some I did as a group leader, and some are also like training courses in the field of youth work. And uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to like name all the topics like because I have been doing projects for like three years or something like uh, like that now so yeah it's been quite a few but it's uh it, it, it they were they were all great in like their own way and they all had like their own uh, benefits and also like the robux so of course but every project is like uh, ups and downs you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah can you give me some examples of these topics of projects like few of them uh well uh, i also did, uh, went to the one that never my event about uh Social inclusion of children with disabilities. I also did uh, a few uh, where we were also working with children uh, with different needs. Uh, some were, uh, there was like also one training course regarding mentorship of uh, ESC volunteers. Uh, there was there was a few of them uh, regarding uh, social inclusion of youth in general and like the topics of like racism, xenophobia, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those were like the main topics. Great. And we can ask you the. Can you explain what is the training course? Uh, sorry, tr yeah, training course and youth exchange. Uh, so basically, training course and youth exchanges. They are like the two main project uh, types, and uh, the main difference is the target audience for them. Uh, so uh, youth exchanges are more uh, meant for the youth, for the young people themselves. Uh, there's also a, a, an age limit. I'm not like hundred percent sure what it is. I think it's from 15 to 30 years for participants and uh, there is no age limit for the group leader which is usually a youth worker 
and uh, the, the main topic of them is to build a sense of uh, togetherness in Europe and uh, to teach uh, young people uh, some new methods of uh, just like going through life, uh, like developing self-confidence, uh, general like self-improvements uh, through non-formal education methods. Uh, while the other is uh, called a training course and those are meant for uh, youth workers, so people that work with young, with young people. Uh, those are uh, usually uh, a bit more serious, I would say. They're more focused on like formal education methods and non-formal education methods, so it's like a mix of, of both. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and basically, yeah, you learn there how like to approach a certain topic. Like for instance, I did uh, this project that was about mentoring, mentoring uh, ESC volunteers, and there we went like to a lot of stuff like uh, uh, what's like the role of a mentor, what's like the difference between like a mentor and a project coordinator, and like so on and so on. Yeah, so that's like the the main difference, like the target audience, like young people or youth workers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as far we know, you were a leader in the project, so uh, uh, how you became a leader? So uh, basically, uh, long story short, like a team leader is uh, in a youth exchange, a person responsible for, for, the, for the youth of, of uh, his organization. And uh, usually it's, it's, it really depends like uh, from project to project, like sometimes the role is uh, very serious and sometimes it's not. Uh, but usually the, the youth leader is someone from that's like close to the organization and that's like responsible for the group, that's like responsible for them to arrive at the spot, to be present at the activities during the project and stuff like that. And how I became a group leader, well, uh, I did like some volunteering for uh, my, my own NGO where I volunteer regularly. And uh, after that I just, I, I was like a person of trust for, for the president of the NGO and I was also sent as a group leader too to make sure everything uh, goes smooth. Yeah. No, that's good. pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I want to ask you how long these projects are generally? Uh, well, th there's also like official uh, documentation on the European Union pages, but from the top of my head, I think that youth exchanges uh, are from uh, three or four activity days up to 21 or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the, the limit, but uh, I would say that like the average is from 10 to 14 activity days. That, that's like how, how the majority of the projects last. And training courses, uh, I think it's also, I think it's also like, I think it's like three days to 14 days of activities ar ar so around that. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. You can find uh, all documentations from the, the own website. So you can see we shared also last week. So you can check from over there. And guys, how did you find and reach those projects? So for me, it was actually thanks to Mario because at that time I was studying social work, as I said before. And Mario was uh, at that time attending a lot of projects. <laughs> so I was basically just annoying him. I was like, yo, like I want to go to some projects. Like I want to experience that. And then that project in Romania came up. And Mario was like, if you want to, you can apply for that project. And I basically uh, filled in uh, the application and sent it. And then in a, within, I think, a few days, uh, I got a response that they chose me. So that's how I ended up with Mario. And he was actually the leader of that project as well. So it was very, very convenient. <laughs> so yeah, it was very fun. Oh, perfect. And how did you? Uh, well, honestly, I found out about like my first project like randomly. I was just on a coffee with a friend, and she told me like uh, about this project, and I was like, "Yeah, that can be true." Like, that sounds like too good to be too true. Like, the, <laughs> like <laughs> everything is paid for: the trip, the accommodation, mm -hmm. the food, and like, yeah, you, the European Union is paying for my vacation. And like, honestly, if you don't go to a project, it sounds like that. It sounds like mm -hmm. a vacation, but it's really not. Uh, it, it has like. Uh, you also have like some obligations that you need to like fulfill. Like it, it, it I'm not gonna lie, it is like a lot of fun, uh, but it's also like not uh, not like uh, a class trip where you go like with, with your classmates and just have fun the whole day. Uh, but you're also like bonding through activities, you're learning through non-formal education methods and uh, you're developing like your self-confidence and generally like uh, building a better like persona like for yourself. And uh, yeah, and after the first one, uh, I was I was like, there's like a few groups for creations. Uh, I think like the most popular one is on Facebook called Youth Opportunities for Creations. 
and that's where like you can find the most of the projects. But also another way to find project is to just join a local NGO and do some local volunteering because uh, uh, there's also like uh, two types of volunteering, international and local. And uh, how do I say it? Uh, they're both great and they both have their, their own benefits. But uh, uh, usually like a lot of organizations don't want to send anyone on projects. So it's of course better if you're like an active part of an NGO and are doing like local community work and local uh, activities, then you will uh, most likely be selected for like international projects as well. But usually there's an application process and uh, it's also important that you're like familiar with the topic and that, that are interested in the topic because if you're not interested in the topic, it can be hard for the people to work with you and you will also probably feel like a bit bored and like will not, not know what to do and you will have like a poor experience simply because you were not like uh, the perfect fit for that project. But uh, yeah, just to, to go back to the original question, uh, for creations, the best way is to, uh, that Facebook group, uh, Youth Opportunities for Creations. There's also a site called Salta Youth. That's more for training courses for youth workers, but I think you can also find a few youth exchanges there. And yeah, also networking is also like a key part uh, in like finding up uh, about these projects and stuff. Yes, as far I know, like uh, there is a lot of pages for this kind of projects, which they are with their descriptions on the Facebook. So every country has their own. So you can reach from over there if you search from Facebook or I don't know from Google, you will see those. Yes, you want to add something? Uh, no, actually, that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. I want to actually add something. Uh, most of these uh, applications have like question based on like your motivations and your like expectations for the project. So that's kind of like questions uh, you need to think about uh, when you apply for that kind of projects. So yeah, if you want to, of course. Yes, surely. It's up to your like willingness, this kind of projects. I mean, you cannot do like, I, I will go and travel. You have to put something from yourself while you're in the project, of course. So okay, well, let's go with the first projects. Maya, how were the experiences <laughs> with your first project? What was your task, what you did? Uh, oh my, so for the first project, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like keep my expectations low. I don't know why, I was just like, okay, if I uh, ended up like being disappointed, like, you know, I don't wanna go through that. But I was actually very excited, first of all, because, of course, I was going with my lovely friend, Mario, and also <laughs> Marin. So shout out to Marin as well. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, but yeah, it was very, very interesting experience. That is for sure. Um, we had like activities every day for like whole day. So it was like uh, it was never like boring. You always uh, have to, to do something. Um, also, um, it was like seven people from seven different countries, if I recall correctly. So 49 people to meet and hang out with and like in span of like two weeks, which is like uh, a little time, a short time for like a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fun. We had uh, intercultural evenings as well when we tried uh, food from different countries. Uh, to like learn about different countries and we also had like um, some events for example karaoke nights which was very fun uh, so yeah but basically you have a bunch of activities through the day uh, with like I don't know with games or just like creative uh, creative like tasks and everything so yeah it, it was interesting yeah um, great yes <laughs> I, before before we continue, uh, we have comments. Nina says first, have a great World Social Work Day for 16 March, uh, Maya. Thank you. No, I, don't, I don't study social work anymore. Thank you very much. Yeah, it is great. Oh, she says, uh, I work in a special vocational college field with youth. And also she is experienced, I think. Oh, yes. nice. And Stephanie says, I'm really interested, uh, I love working with youth. I mean, Cameron, is it possible for me to apply? Do you have uh, Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about Cameron specifically, but uh, these projects are, are, are usually for countries in the European Union or for partner countries. And honestly, I'm not sure if Cameron is like a partner country yet, but uh, I know like my friend, one of my friends was from Cameron, he was on a project with me 
but he was at the time studying in Italy, so I think he was going as an Italian citizen, not as a Cameroon citizen. Mm. So honestly, uh, I think it could be possible, but I think you need to check with like, with like your local NGOs or, or just Google like is Cameroon a European Union partner country? Yes, actually there is a list for that, so you can just, as I said, you can search from the offside European Solidarity Corps. They put in your list, so you can uh, check from over there. Yeah. You would like to continue? Yeah, let's oh, continue. Yeah, you will continue, yes. Uh, the first project. Oh, first project, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so my first project was also in Romania and uh, honestly at that time like uh, I, I, I didn't know like anyone like that went to the project before so I had like no, no idea what to experience, what to expect and uh, I was feeling like really adventurous like <laughs> at that time so I was just like yeah, you do, I don't know, I saw like a post on Facebook like uh, one spot left for Romania, the departure is in four days, the, the, I was like yeah sure let's apply you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's and uh, I didn't know anyone in the group of Croatians or anyone else. And honestly, it was like one of the best experiences ever. Uh, we we went like uh, we did like a road trip. We went from Zagreb to Romania uh, in a van. It took us like twenty hours <laughs> to stop oh driving. God. Yeah, it was like a really really long drive. But it's it was like so great. We, we uh, like at the time when we arrived at the project, we were already like a team. And people were people thought that like we knew each other from like before, but we all met like the the, the day before pretty much. Uh, so yeah, that's like a great head start to the project. <laughs> and the project was also great. Like the location was great. Uh, we were in like uh, kind of like in a small village cabins or something. Like basically, we were like alone on the property, and we had like a huge garden and stuff in the summer. And we were like constantly like outside having fun mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, yeah, and everything was great, like the, the organization, the location, uh, the company, everything. Yeah. Yes. Good experience. Yes, no. it was very yeah. good experience. Yeah, great, great and experience. great location, I think. Yeah. That was a personal comment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what do you think, I mean, what can you say about the uh, benefits of projects and youth exchange, like both of you? Oh, oh my God. So first, and I think the most important thing, like uh, you will get out of your comfort zone, like a lot, which is like a good thing, uh, especially for me, because I was, I mean, I'm usually like social person, but I have my moments that I'm just like, you know, shy and I don't want to like do extreme things. But like, I think it is important to get out of your comfort zone because then you, you will want to like, uh, have new experience, uh, new knowledge, uh, try to do new things so that uh, you will meet a lot of new people and interesting people uh, from a lot of different countries and new cultures, uh, try uh, new food which is always awesome Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course uh, and, all, uh, and you will also like um, improve your skills some of you that you, you have some skills or you will learn new skills for example presentation skills uh, public speaking um, or something like that you will most like work on yourself which is always good uh, it's a good thing so yeah it is a very like fun and um, uh, interesting experience and you will gain uh, confidence as well which is also amazing so yeah that is like the best thing so yeah and yeah, what, are you, what are you yes. learning? What are you gaining? What is your project? perspective? Uh, well, honestly, I think like networking is like the key part uh, for me uh, because you get to meet like so many people from so many different countries, and uh, it really like helps also break the stereotypes. Uh, I don't know, and uh, uh, also like one of the great great thing is like when you like go to like a few projects, you there's like not a single project where you don't meet at least like three or four like amazing people that you like st still talk to like to this day and it's also great like when you travel like uh, it's like pretty much wherever you go you always like have someone that you like know that can like recommend you something meet up with you show you like around and stuff uh, yeah and also like uh, the great thing is that you always like uh, it's forcing you to get out of your comfort zone and to forcing you to like learn new things to adapt and overcome uh, and uh, to learn more about yourself yeah. That's nice. I mean, uh, yes, I can say that. I will say <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> okay, which countries you have been in projects? Just Romania. <laughs> it, will it, it will uh, increase. In future, hopefully so. So yeah, I'm excited. But yeah. 
podcast and you. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. Yes, bring it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I can't really count that. I don't know. Like, do you mean like uh, countries that I we went like only for projects, or countries that I like visited like in general? Like, like projects, like projects. more related. Projects. Uh, <laughs> 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 you didn't make it. Yeah, it was like Roma- <laughs> uh, Romania. Definitely, yeah, I was in Romania, uh, Austria. Uh, 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 Armenia, Turkey, yeah, Turkey, yeah, <laughs> Turkey, yeah, I remember Turkey. Uh, How could you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, th- I think there was like one or two more, but honestly, I can't UK. remember. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. UK. I think That's no, no, that no? was like touristy. Oh, okay. oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> And what did you get? Oh no, yeah, as we talk about, it. did you did you like the culture over there where you went before? In Romania, um, I mean, I only like we were only like hanging out with people like from the projects like uh, that we went to, so like I didn't like experience that much of a culture in Romania, but. I don't know. It was okay. Like I can't complain. It it wasn't like anything bad. It was just like I didn't like explore uh the city, I mean the place that we went to because we were just having activities the whole day and having evening hangouts. So yeah. So it was it was okay. And yours? Uh well, honestly, uh I have experienced a bit more of these countries because uh, as uh, Sometimes the youth exchanges also have like a special event called advanced planning visit and in advanced planning visits the group leaders of each country meet in the location a few months earlier and they discuss like the the, the activities themselves and like the project itself uh, and uh, I went there alone most of the times because it was only like one person per, per country uh, but honestly, it, it's hard to say, like, I mean, I like uh, some parts of every culture, like, I, 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 I didn't, like, feel unwanted anywhere where I have ever been in my life, so I think, like, every, like, culture has, like, their own, like, plus and minuses, or, like, in my in my mind, plus or minuses, but I think it's more just, like, how you're, like, uh, used, you're, it's, like, you're used to, like, one thing, and when you experience something else, you might see, see it as a minus, but, like, it's not always like that, it's, like, just different like different background and different like experience in life and that like makes people the way they are yes. mm-hmm. okay and before before yeah. our question we have, uh, we have comments as a question oh we have two <laughs> <laughs> and olivia asked what is the most valuable thing you learned at a project i'll give you a few seconds <laughs> Ooh, as I said, like the most important thing, get out of your comfort zone. Like it is the best thing ever because you will experience some things that you've never experienced before and it will be good for uh, you and for your mental health. So I don't know. It is just like go out of your comfort zone, just like do things. So, yeah, that is the most valuable thing ever. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't really say like it's something that I learned, but it's something that I obtained with projects and it's like friendships with so many people. Mm-hmm. That that's like probably like my favorite part of of the projects themselves. Yes, it's like true, you true. knowing everywhere of yeah, the yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that also. Okay, I'm coming to my second question. Nina asks, what kind of project would you be dr- your dream project and in which country? UK? UK and yours. <laughs> So, like, (laughs) I actually don't know, but, like, uh, for now, a couple of weeks ago, I've applied for a project in Germany, since I was supposed to go there anyway. But I've applied there, and it is a project, like, working with kids and with, like, uh, youth, so I think it's going to be a great opportunity for me and for my future education and job, since I want to study psychology. So I think that would be like um, the perfect uh, project and opportunity for me. So yeah, it's gonna be fun yeah. if they choose me. So <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yours? Uh, well, honestly, I would love to do like an ESC, like a long-term project, because I can never live outside of Croatia. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think that will be possible because I'm like working full time now, so I can't really like take like six months off of work just to do like an ESC. Uh, and about the location, honestly, I'm not really sure. 
it really depends more of the to of the topic of the project because the location mm -hmm. is a, is uh, not the main thing. But if I was doing an ESC, I would definitely prefer like a big city because I don't know. When I travel, I also I prefer big cities over like rural areas. Uh, like the city I want to visit the most is like New York, which is like a huge city. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. like love the the rush of big cities and like everything there is to, to like see and explore. Yeah, I agree. It's a great city to discover and be there, live even for all time. Uh, Suwanga asks a question. What is the most surprising thing you have learned about yourself by participating in a project? Wow, I like it. Ooh. <laughs> okay, a few more seconds. <laughs> you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's not really something that I like uh, learned about myself per se. It's something that I just like noticed after a few projects. It's like how my self-confidence like rose quite a bit. Uh, because when I remember like my first project, I was just like sitting in the corner, or, you know, like seeing like what will happen. I don't know, like, and like by my like third or fourth, I was already like a bit experienced. I was like more confident, uh, and uh, I, I also like made other people feel like more, how do I say it, like more more welcome, like to to open yourself up more and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's that's like the the more the most surprising thing for me at, at the time was like, like that. Yeah. Uh. I will actually have to agree on this one. Uh, confidence, but also uh, how uh, how open I was with uh, some people from the project at the time we were on a project. So it was uh, actually kind of like uh, uh, weird to see like myself in that like, I mean, I am a social person, but like um, still it was it was so weird to see myself being so open and so like you know, uh, I would say like uh, trusting in other people. So yeah, I think that's the most like surprising thing. So yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you Definitely. for that question. It is a very good question, actually. <laughs> yes, like counted, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go with our questions then. Okay, have you ever had the difficulties in projects? Hmm. While you ain't there, like well, you can maybe you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you your uh, stories you cannot you forget. Um, oh, I don't know. I I think that well, for me, ex uh, for example, like I'm very uh, bad at public speaking. So <laughs> whenever we need to, <laughs> whenever we, we needed to present something, like uh, every single one of us. It was like very difficult for me, for me because I always like get red in the face and it's just like awful <laughs> for me. Uh, and it's just like getting hot every time. Like I need to like speak, you know, to other people, to the audience. Uh, so that was like the most, I think, difficult thing. But like now I'm just trying to get better at it. So yeah, like right now I'm just... <laughs> trying to calm myself down but yeah it was like public speaking was like the worst for me but yeah i agree it's so scary for yeah. Me also. yeah 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 it is weird but it's also a good thing to improve yeah yeah yes. i agree i agree that that's why i'm just trying to be better at it, at it so yeah yeah you need to force yourself what do you want to like getting out of my comfort zone <laughs> as i said <laughs> so yeah, yeah. and uh, well, actually, since I was like a group leader, I had like a, a bit, uh, a few more issues uh, with other participants usually. Uh, it's usually nothing that, that big of a deal, it's usually just like small conflicts between people that you like just need to de-escalate and stuff like that. Uh, a few medical issues and stuff like that, but uh, it's uh, it, it's all manageable. Oh yeah, also like uh, my boss caught on fire once when I was returning home, that was, <laughs> yeah, I, I count that as a difficulty as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was fun. And yeah, then I had to took a, a taxi to the airport, which was like 200 kilometers away. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> yeah, that, wow. that was yeah, yeah, that was a bit difficult uh, <laughs> at, at the time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, a tiny, a tiny bit of an issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about cultures? You had any had uh, any difficulties with culture of countries? We're getting used to that. Be there as a yeah, experience. I mean, I was only in Romania, so I, I I can't tell you much because again, I was just hanging out with the same people every day from other countries. 
Uh, so yeah, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't like I was feeling like you know I'm lost or that that's like I'm in a different country. It was just like oh I met new people. I'm gonna be with them like two weeks. Uh, so yeah, it was it was like you know just like a, another day for me with new people. But that is about it. Like nothing like different, like drastic change. Like nothing like that. And you had? Uh, well, honestly, only just like a few language barriers. That's pretty much it. Like I, I, I don't know. As I said before, like uh, I think ev every, every culture and every country is welcoming if if you are if you don't mean them harm, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it it's also a bit uh, important, like how how you like present yourself uh, to someone new. Yes. Uh, so while we are speaking of culture. Which culture was more similar with Croatia and which one was completely different? Oh, for your perspective. <laughs> yes. He's been to a lot of projects, uh, he knows better. Well, I mean, obviously, like the most similar ones are like the Slavic countries. Th that That's like, I don't know, it's just pretty much a different language, but the traditions and stuff are like more or less the, the same, with a few exceptions. And like the most different, uh, I don't know, honestly, I can't really say. Uh, like the most different was probably like Armenia and Georgia, but it's not not really that different. It's just mm -hmm. like a language that I don't understand, and there are also like not that many people speak English, especially like in the rural parts. Uh, so yeah, but I wouldn't really say that it, it was like uh, bad or or difficult in like any 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 sort of way. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that no. counts. Yeah, it's also an issue I think because you cannot communicate that very well, so. And what is the first thing you love to do when you are in new countries or like you can count as a new places, like di completely mm. different? Like I should try that. What is it? What is it I need to discover for this nation? Um, well, first, uh, I think I like I just love to like explore the cities uh, that I go to. Uh, just like getting lost I mean not really but like you know just like uh, explore just walk around um, also try their traditional food wherever I am just like try as much as food as possible of course <laughs> and, yes, <yes. laughs> and try to meet new people because you never know who are you gonna meet and you know it, it would be like a, ge a great experience to just like hang out with new people and for them to show you like uh, new places you know something that they know that you don't know about and yeah just like explore that's it like that is the main thing uh well for me if it was a long travel i first go like straight to bed and, and <laughs> get some rest <laughs> of yeah, course. yeah uh but other than that honestly like uh, i like like uh, when i like get a bit bored of okay that's not like the first thing i do but when, I, when I'm like in a city a bit longer and I get a bit bored, I usually like just like turn off my phone and just like start walking wherever I feel like. I don't know if I feel like going right somewhere, I go right and just like explore the city like randomly, you know, without like looking at like the map, finding like the touristy places and stuff like that. That, that's, that was like also like quite, a, quite fun always. And also like tr trying new food is also like always great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, always. that's always. <laughs> <laughs> We all love that. <laughs> Oh, we have a question okay. before you start. Okay, Olivia asked specifically to Maya. I think oh, that's about you. you said that I applied for oh. a project. How did you find a suitable ESC that you wanted to apply for? Wow, thank you for the question, Olivia. So uh, I actually like uh, didn't have in plan to like uh, apply for some projects. I was just like thinking about, okay, I need to go to Germany, do my thing and that's it. But since I like met a lot of volunteers uh, during my time here, uh, one of one of the volunteers, Bruno, shout out to him. <laughs> um, he was telling me like, "Oh, we will find you some project like in Germany. Like you don't have to worry." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." I was just, I thought that he was kidding at first, and then one day he texted me and he was like, uh, "Hey, like we have like a project and." Uh, Germany in Vienna so if you want to like you can apply and I was just like uh, I did my little research on the project and it was like the topics that I want to uh, 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 participate in so like working with kids and um, youth and everything so uh, I've applied for that 
uh, and yeah, and now I'm just waiting, <laughs> waiting for their response. So yeah, that was uh, a very nice, uh, nice opportunity actually, like in the right time. So yeah, thank you. That's it. <laughs> thank you for questions. Thank you. <laughs> and we are waiting for your more comments. I would like to ask, like, what do you want to curious about? Maybe you missed our the last episode, so here's open. You can ask more, <laughs> and yeah, you can come. And yeah, Bruno and Olivia were our latest uh, guests. You can watch their syncast from our Spotify and YouTube channels. Yes, you maybe you even remember because I assume you mostly watched. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Mario, you talked about language barriers. Do you have any story about it, or you experienced uh, something? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. It all started in a Turkish airport. <laughs> yeah, in a land far, far away. Uh, uh, like long story, sh it was, it's quite a long story, so I, and I will have to cut it down. Uh, basically, uh, that day I woke up at like six in the morning. Uh, I worked until like four. Then I took a bus to the airport. Then I flew like Zagreb to Istanbul. Then I had a layover in Istanbul, uh, and I, f I had a flight at two a.m. from Istanbul to Samsung. And in the meantime, while I was waiting at the airport, uh, I lost my passport. But the thing is. Oh I God. noticed that I lost my passport like when the plane was boarding because I was just like watching a movie before because like I don't know I had like a few a few hours to spare and uh, the second I noticed my passport is gone I went into like full panic mode I just started like running finding people uh, and like I talked to the police guy to the guy at like the info counter no one no one spoke any English <laughs> at, at, at like an international airport. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. And, and, We're so sorry. <laughs> and my, my plane was boarding and I had like no idea what to do. Oh no. Uh, and basically like just the, the minute before uh, the guy told me like, well, you're already in Turkey, you know, you can like board the plane. You don't need a passport to go f from a city in Turkey to a city in Turkey. So I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, I come to, 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 to the boarding gate and she's like, do you have a passport? No, I lost it. <laughs> do you have a boarding pass? No, I lost it with my passport. And she and she rolled her eyes a bit. Uh, but uh, uh, honestly, like uh, when she like saw my face, because I was like running like through the airport, like like a, like crazy. It's a huge airport, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very big. Yeah, it's a huge airport, and like uh, it was like two in the morning, so it's not really like full of people working there <laughs> as well. Uh, so yeah, and then I like landed uh, in Samsung without my passport, and I had to take like a bus to some hotel, and like it was like three three thirty in the morning, something like that, and I like sat in the bus uh, to my hotel, and like every single bus went except for mine. Like mine was just still standing there. And like one and a half hours later, it's still standing there, and I'm like, not, not. And people are like, there's like people in it, like a lot, but it's still standing, and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, what are we waiting for? <laughs> and and they, uh, and at the end, I noticed it, they were waiting for the bus like to fill completely with people, and then the bus started. <laughs> and oh it was gosh. at that time it was already like I don't know, like 4:30 in the morning. I was just like waiting to get to my hotel, and and like I was like the only foreigner there. And, and uh, I don't know, like s some guy was like asking me like where I need to go. That was like, that was, like really helpful. Like he didn't know any English, but he just <laughs> saw like my face and that like I think told him everything that, like, that he needs to know. Uh, and he was like just asking about like my hotel, because uh, I don't know, like the hotel is not really a stop. It's more like you need to tell the driver, yo bro, stop here. Yeah. Uh, and he was asking about my hotel and then like he was like, oh yeah, uh, don't worry, don't worry. I think he said don't worry, I don't know. <laughs> he was speaking Turkish and be like, uh, uh, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and basically at the end he just like shouted something, the bus stop in front of my hotel. <laughs> oh, I was wow. like, thank you very much, sir. And I exited the hotel and uh, either it was like 5.30 in the morning and I just like went to the hotel, checked in and went to sleep after 24 hours. <laughs> and without my passport, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and and uh, just to, to uh, there's uh, like a small part of the story also. I was trying to call the airport for like a week when I was in Turkey. No one was answering my phone, no one. And wow. the thing is, like, I knew I lost my my passport at the airport, like, because I had it when I entered the ter the country at the airport, and I didn't have it when I entered the plane. Uh, so basically, uh, in the end, like the last day, I called my embassy. First of all, they were like super pissed off because I told them I lost my passport one week later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's not really uh, what you should do if you lose your passport. Uh, and uh, yeah, after that I went with my Turkish friend who is an English teacher uh, and uh, we went to the police station. 
and they were also like just shouting at me like why didn't I do this at the airport why am I coming here and then he like shouted at them and he, they shouted at him for like three hours and then I got like a paper <laughs> saying uh, I don't know I lost my passport here and there blah 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 and with this paper I was supposed to go to my embassy and uh, the last day I was just like telling the people like I have like this crazy task uh, yeah uh, uh, when I was going home I had flight from Samsung to Istanbul uh, to one airport to, to I don't know what are the names of the of the old Istanbul airport I, I think uh, Sadiha or something mm -hmm. like that yes. I had a flight there and my flight to Zagreb was uh, in the other airport in the in new airport the Istanbul yeah, yeah and I had like a three and a half hour layover which is like more than enough usually but then you don't have passport and you need to get to the embassy it's not really enough <laughs> oh my and god yeah basically I had to like uh, get to the embassy and I was just like asking all my Turkish friends like do you know like any taxis that will like not rip me off like that will drive me like from one airport to the embassy and to the other airport and I found like a contact of like some half illegal Turkish taxi <laughs> 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 which I called uh, and I had all all set up and uh, during the night uh, I got a call from my friend and she was like hey my friend works as a cleaning lady at the Istanbul airport she went to the police station and your passport is there Oh, oh and so yeah, God. yeah, and uh, like uh, networking people, networking. <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, that's the one example, yeah, best example. Yeah. And basically, I uh, I just like went to sleep like more in, more peaceful than ever before. And in the morning, just took a plane, uh, took a bus directly from one airport to the other, went to the police station, took my passport, and and I was on my <laughs> on my way back home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my cool God. story. And yeah. <laughs> I can say I know I haven't uh, surprised at all. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. Welcome to Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> and oh did God. you have any language difficulties in Romania? Uh, actually no. I I I can't even think of like. I don't know, maybe at the store because people there uh, didn't speak English, but you need to just like pay and that's it. Like go f like. But like, um, as I said, it, it wasn't like bad because I was hanging out with people who knew English, so that was fun. So yeah, I didn't I didn't have <laughs> that kind of story, <laughs> thankfully. So yeah, I'm good. You are lucky. I'm great. I'm <laughs> lucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we continue, we have one more question. Would you like to live permanently abroad in a permanent job if you would uh, find one maybe through the project? Uh, well, yes. for, mm -hmm. for, for me, I'm not sure, like, uh, it's hard to say I would, like, live somewhere else permanently because I would have to live somewhere at least temporarily <laughs> before <laughs> staying there permanently. But I would definitely, like, try, I love to try to live in, a, in another country. I'm not really sure which one, I don't know, like, uh, maybe Austria. I, I, I was in Austria a few times and I really liked it. Uh, plus, I know the language, so it would be quite easier for me to, like, get accustomed there. And, yeah, apart from that, also maybe, like, some more, like, exotic country per se, I don't know, maybe like J Japan or something like that. Yeah, yeah it would be really cool. Yeah. Do you have? Um, I don't have specific countries, but like, uh, it is a good question actually. Um, but maybe, I've never like thought of that. Uh, but maybe I would, like you never know if I find something like that to to projects, why not? Like, why not try? If I really, really like it, it's it's always possible so like yeah it would be an interesting uh, experience and life for sure so yes. yeah i mean maybe maybe yeah, yeah. i can say right now but like if if it happens it happens so yeah i agree well, i would like to have that <laughs> personally <laughs> and which culture are you mostly interested in i mean you don't need to visit even before like which culture as you see or read or I don't know, research. Uh, well, my answer is a bit political. <laughs> I would say, uh, uh, or more historian. Uh, but honestly, I'm, I'm really interested in like the ancient uh, cultures, like ancient Greece, uh, ancient Aztec, uh, and stuff like that. I don't know. And like from 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 the countries that are like still um, uh, countries, sorry, uh, cultures that are like still around us. I'm not really sure, like, I think uh, every one of them has, like, some interesting things, so it, it's hard to say, like, I really want to, like, learn more about this specific culture. Yes. 
Yeah, every every country has uh, something beautiful in their culture, of course. Uh, and like for me, I don't know why, like uh, Japanese, <laughs> like Japan, and like their culture is like very. Um, I would like say maybe specific and interesting because I don't know like I've never had like a wish to like go there like I would love to go there but like never like never had like a strong like uh, wish to go there but like whenever I see uh, or hear about like people that went there or just like uh, want to go there and it sounds like very very interesting so I think that would be like some kind of like cool experience to go there and just like experience that uh, Japanese culture for sure yes. so yeah it's interesting yeah. so well, if you if you decide to leave one of them one of the countries which one would be like as a city even oh hmm <laughs> <Question>. uh, <laughs> not like live but maybe like visit uh, some places in uh, UK <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know London or I don't know Manchester or something like that uh, I would like to visit Turkey as well I don't know I just I would <laughs> love to go there so yeah mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know why but also like Canada they have like some pretty places yes. there so maybe there as well the so nature yeah, of Canada is perfect yeah, yeah oh my God, I would like so to beautiful. experience that so yeah I mean I want to go to a lot of countries but like those are my like top, top like three um, countries, so yeah. Oh, you uh, New York, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Crazy. Yeah, no, that's it. I don't know. It's I, I just lo love the city like forever and uh, would definitely like to try to live there. Especially like when you hear stories that like it's a city that never sleeps and stuff like that. Yes. And you know, I really want to experience, you know, that, that kind of uh, experience. It's really, really difficult or a uh, different culture of the New York because it's too mixed. I mean, I mean, I don't know. It surprises me with yeah, the stories it, it, all the it's time. It's really an international city. It's like uh, it, it's like mm -hmm. the whole world in one city. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, let's go with difficulties. Uh, I want to ask: Have you ever had uh, difficulties with uh, food cultures of countries? Food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like, do you I find mean some people something interesting in some countries? Yeah, some people had like stomach issues when they, they tasted the other foods of their country. Maybe did you have? I mean, um, not not mm. really stomach issues or stuff, but uh, I mean, I tried I, I tried food that I didn't like at all, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, like but other than that, like not no real like difficulties uh, or issues. What what was the name of the dish? Yeah, I, I, I like told you already. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Turkish dish. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 it's like uh, those kofta meatballs that you eat with like salad and stuff. You know, like that you like just. But I don't know. It's 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 not. It's it's you eat it raw. I don't know how they call it. Like ko something kofta. Uh, we have many kinds of kofta. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, tr I tried one and uh, I don't <laughs> want uh, really to try it. <laughs> so more. I'm so curious yeah, what to try. I don't know. It's like uh, you you like eat it with like a salad. Usually like a salad leaf. You put a bit of lemon on it. It's served like on a big platter. Uh, we what we serve in Turkey is every in all the time in a big plate. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Like the, the specific is the, it's not cooked. It's it's just eaten raw. Oh. You know. Okay. So Maybe it's up to the restaurant. Yes. I don't know. I, you sell it like on the street everywhere. It's everywhere. Interesting. Yeah. Did you? Oh, have I've I've never had like some difficulties. I'm pretty sure that I've tried some food that I didn't like, but I have I don't have like any specific <laughs> food in my mind. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know, I just, no, I, I didn't have, like, any bad experience with, like, food from other countries, so, that is a that's, good thing, yes, so, yeah, a good try thing. new food. <laughs> yeah, there is no much uh, deeply dif difference between uh, around Europe countries of yes. food cultures, mm -hmm. so even in Turkey and Croatia, uh, like, we have so many similar things here. Like, yes. Like coffee, even the names are same. Kave, <laughs> Jezve. <laughs> so. Yeah. I feel yeah. like home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nina says I was in a uh, work exchange through Erasmus Plus uh, in 2019 in United Kingdom, Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> 
Celine, don't cry. I'm, I'm don't so cry. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we spoke about the Balkans and like, yeah, we can continue with that. What is the cost of living in Balkans in general when you compare some stuff? Like, mm. hmm. uh, well, I don't, specifically <laughs> Croatia, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a bit more expensive than like the more Eastern European countries, uh, but still a bit cheaper than the Western. Right? It's like the the golden middle, let's say. Uh, Yes, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's hard to co it's hard to compare prices because uh, prices really vary on like your income level. <laughs> so yeah, yeah if, if if you if you like work in in, in the USA and come to Croatia, everything will be like free for you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it uh, it also depends like uh, in which cities or places you go to Cro in Croatia. For example, like uh, maybe the cost for some people from other countries will be expensive and from for another it will be cheap like it is like it it all depends like really on the on the places yeah, but yeah i have to agree with maria like it is like uh like in There's the middle yes. yeah. and it really depends like what you are like consuming or buying yeah, of course if it. something grows like in 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 uh in the close proximity mm -hmm. of the city of course it will be cheaper for, for instance i don't know like uh, salmon Salmon is like quite expensive in Croatia, but mm -hmm. in Norway it's pretty much uh, not free, but it's it's really really cheap. For instance, so it it, it does also like a quite a big factor, like uh, like what specifically like are you interested in? Yes, it's a big perspective actually. Yeah, uh, can you manage to live in um, West Europe? Uh, well, Croatia is almost West Europe. <laughs> <laughs> in my <laughs> mind, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, of course, I don't know. I'm not really a barbarian, so <laughs> I don't think I would have m much travel adapting to like more civilized countries. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, in projects like it's it's not hard because they're giving too many things like your uh, food money, your pocket money, your transportation. So yeah, right in projects, it's not too hard to live. Uh, yeah, in projects, way. everything is like uh, covered for you. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. worry about that much stuff, financial advice. Yeah. Yes. That's a good thing, actually. Okay, before our last questions, uh, you can ask your also last questions because we are about to finish this syncast today. And yeah, let's go with our last two questions. Uh, what is your uh, advice about volunteering to our audience who would like to participate? Just or thinking. Just go for it. <laughs> like first of all, you need to like obviously uh, research the projects that you're interested uh, in because you know if you have to like like the topic of the project uh, so you can actually apply. But like other than that, just like go. It is like a great experience and it's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna meet a lot of new people. Uh, getting out of your comfort zone, like everything that I already said. So uh, just take the opportunity if you have and just go. That is like the main advice. Just go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> I support you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I agree completely with Maya. Like if, if, if you like want to go, to, uh, sorry, if you have the opportunity, you should definitely go. But also I would like to like uh, draw your attention a bit to other projects outside of this Erasmus Plus world. Because there's, you can also do like some local volunteering in your own mm -hmm. country or community or city or whatever. And it's also quite rewarding and it's also uh, good for yourself, for your self-development. Also great for networking, for meeting uh, other local people uh, interested in like making the city a better place and making the world a better place. And uh, that's, that's also like... Uh, a, a great benefit other than, than like the European Union projects. Yeah, mm. pretty much that, yeah. And do you have? Do you want to add something to uh, people that uh, never been participate this any kind of projects before? Like before you already come. said some things, but yeah, before any supporting come. sentence for them? Uh, well, honestly, like I think you have nothing to lose if you tr if you even go to at least like one project. Like if you don't like it, well, you know, you just you, you, you wasted tried. like <laughs> a week or two of your life, but you, you still manage. You still got some experience from it. Mm. So, yeah, I would definitely like recommend like for everyone to at least try. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Just just try, see how it works out, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you learn that that. This is not something for yeah, you, and exactly. you will just not go uh, uh, again. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So just try, just try. 
agree, agree. We have nothing much. to lose. Trust me, nothing I mean, to lose. Yeah, and I don't think that you're not gonna like or something because their organizations are super cool, as I observed. Yes, I like all of them. <laughs> and Nina says something. Great conversation. I wish you all a great and sunny spring to Zagreb. Stay safe and good luck to all of you. Thank oh, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank so much. Sweet. Yes. And we came to the end of our mm -hmm. streaming podcast. If yes. you don't have any question, yeah, let's finish for today. Do you have? I know that's gonna be like after seven seconds. But <laughs> 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 delay. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of difficult to manage the delays, especially remember the last time, like, after yeah. the final very closing, uh, all questions were there. And yeah, so I think there's none. So we can close okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will share the sync as on also, also, also in Spotify and YouTube. And you can also find them on Facebook. It's, it stays in Facebook forever. And thank you. And yeah, thank you. Uh, also, we will share our like events as a sync clothes. I think you know, and uh, sync as an IG and Facebook both. Uh, so keep in touch for the participating both those like all the events. And we are waiting for your participations. Thank you. See you next week. It was amazing. See you. See you. Bye.